For months, the Washington rumor mill was rife with speculation that President Trump was unhappy with his Secretary of State Rex Tillerson. Those rumors have now been confirmed, with Trump nominating his CIA director, Mike Pompeo, to replace Tillerson as the top American diplomat. Pompeo himself is set to be replaced at the CIA by Gina Haspel. And it was all announced via Trump's favorite medium, Twitter. He wrote, Mike Pompeo, director of the CIA, will become our new Secretary of State. He will do a fantastic job. Thank you to Rex Tillerson for his service. Gina Haspel will become the new director of the CIA and the first woman so chosen. Congratulations to all. And within a couple of hours of that tweet, Trump stood in front of his presidential helicopter and made this statement. I respect his intellect. I respect the uh, process that we've all gone through together. Uh, we have a very good relationship for whatever reason, chemistry, whatever it is, why do people get along? I've always, right from the beginning, from day one, I've gotten along well with Mike Pompeo. And frankly, I get along well with Rex, too. And, you know, I wish Rex a lot of good things. I think he's going to do, uh, I think he's going to be very happy. I think Rex will be much happier now. But I really appreciate his service. Well, the news was publicly announced as Tillerson arrived back in the U.S. from a trip to Nigeria. And reports quoting unnamed White House officials say Tillerson was actually informed on Friday that he'd be losing his job. A colleague of Tillerson's at the State Department has said no reason has been given for the change. It comes at a time when the U.S. faces enormous diplomatic challenges, including North Korea, Iran, Iraq and, of course, the war in Syria. There were several reports of discord between Trump and Tillerson, including Tillerson reportedly calling Trump a moron. So what will the impact of this be on the State Department and for American diplomacy, as well as what happens inside the White House? With me here in the studio, retired U.S. Brigadier General Mark Kimmett, who served as a Middle East specialist in the administration of George W. Bush, Bush and knows what it's like to be a Secretary of State because he served with Condoleezza Rice when she was Secretary of State. Thank you very much indeed for your time. Do you sure. have to get along with your Secretary of State to have him in the job because Trump has said that he disagreed on things with Tillerson? Well, first of all, the Secretary of State has to be able to speak not only with the president, but on behalf of the president. And I think foreign leaders understood that when they were talking to Rex Tillerson, they weren't really sure if they were talking to Donald Trump. That's interesting. But why would that be? Because of Tillerson or because of Trump? Well, in many ways, the chemistry didn't seem to work out from the beginning. Uh, it was clear that President Trump was forming a very tough team with Jim Mattis, John Kelly at the White House, uh, and other people that really reflected his politics. Mike Pompeo was among them. Uh, he, Rex Tillerson, always seemed to be the outlier. He seemed slow in putting his team together. He seemed more focused on reforming the State Department from within rather than pushing the president's policies abroad. And there were notable disagreements between the two. But that was probably, was it not, the reform within the State Department more coming from the administration from, than from Tillerson himself? Uh, there are a lot of nominations, yep. diplomatic nominations, that sure. the president hasn't made, and money is being withdrawn that it previously had, the State Department. Would Tillerson have been frustrated about that? Would that have been one of the issues, regardless of all the diplomacy going on, the machinations going on inside Washington? Well, I really don't think so. I think part of the problem is that before the president can send a name up to Congress, they have to go through an extremely thorough vetting process. I happen to know many people that are being considered. The vetting process before they're sent up to the United States Congress seems to be much, much longer this time. But there were some notable examples when Rex Tillerson disagreed with the White House as the White House wanted to put their people in the State Department uh, and Rex Tillerson wanted his own people. Yes, one of the recent disagreements seemed to have been on a potential meeting between Donald Trump and Kim Jong-un with Rex Tillerson yeah. saying that he didn't think that would happen. And of course, now we know potentially that should happen by May. Our newsmaker today is, in fact, Mike Pompeo, but I'm asking yeah. you about Rex Tillerson because he's the outgoing man. So one more question about him. What will his short legacy be? What was his biggest achievement as Secretary of State? He has said to that colleague at the State Department that we just quoted, that he felt that he wanted to stay and that he was yep. making a valuable contribution to national security. But how do you regard him overall in his achievements at the State Department? Well, first of all, he came in highly recommended. And over the past couple of weeks in particular, he seemed to be finally getting his feet under himself. Very rocky at the beginning, 
but he seemed to now be taking on the task of speaking for America in the diplomatic tasks. So I think that his legacy will be a book incomplete, a book not finished. And what's Mike Pompeo like? Uh, well, naturally, I have a, an affection for Mike Pompeo. I was teaching at West Point when he was a cadet. He was number one in his class you remember at West him? Point. I don't because I didn't teach the smart people, and Mike Pompeo <laughs> was certainly one of the smart people. He's got a great reputation inside of Washington, D.C. He has the ear of the president. And so I think world leaders, when they hear from Mike Pompeo, know that they're talking to Donald Trump. And as a person, is, uh, well, I mean, you tell me. I don't want to put well, any I, words I, in Well, I think we would all hope that anyone who graduated, graduated from West Point would be of the highest character and highest degree of honor. And I have no reason to think anything but that of Mike Pompeo. What will it do to the State Department, his appointment? Well, two things. I think the State Department should be uplifted because the State Department under Rex Tillerson had been so focused on the internal reviews and the management changes that they didn't think that they were getting anything done. His personality was such that he kept very close counsel of a small group of people, and the State Department likes to have everybody have a voice. I think Mike Pompeo is going to be completely different. I think he'll be much like Colin Powell. He will come in with a military background, understand that the real resources of the State Department are its people. I think he's going to be a much better learner, and, but he's going to be much tougher in terms of his policy views than Rex Tillerson. Donald Trump has also said uh, that uh, he disagreed with Rex Tillerson about the Iran nuclear deal, yep. which Donald Trump would like the yep. European partners, signatories to that deal, have renegotiated. He says that if it doesn't happen, the renegotiation, he'll pull out of it, and that Mike Pompeo does see eye to eye with him on that particular deal. So that's a very concrete example of where American diplomacy could change with Mike Pompeo coming into the White House. No, I agree, and I think he is equally as tough on North Korea, and frankly, he seems to be equally as tough about keeping Guantanamo open. Uh, so I think, in general, you're going to see a shift to the right in the policy of the Secretary of, the Sta uh, Secretary of State. Uh, however, I think on the issue of Syria, he may not be as tough as people would expect him to be. What might people expect at the moment because of the situation in Syria from the U.S. administration and the Secretary of State? Well, I think the real issue is what's going on at the U.N. right now. Nikki Haley is talking about a bombing campaign potentially inside of Syria. And I think that Mike Pompeo is smart enough to realize that that simply won't work to achieve a diplomatic or political end state. Rex Tillerson was head of ExxonMobil. Mm -hmm. Donald Trump was head of the, the Trump conglomerate. When you're in that kind of position, you tell someone to jump and they jump. When you're engaged in international diplomacy, it's not quite so simple. And Rex Tillerson, there are reports that he was not happy yeah. with Nikki Haley, that she, mm -hmm. he felt that she was undermining him. Um, is Mike Pompeo a more inclusive man, having been in diplomatic circles for longer than Rex Tillerson? Well, I actually think it's his military background. Uh, in the corporate world, you can push from the rear in the military, you must lead from the front. So I think that Mike will realize, as I said earlier, the talent is not him. The talent is when the State Department. Now, he has to execute the policies and the views of the President of the United States, but I don't think he will pronounce them. I don't think he will dictate them. I think what he will try to do is use his natural charisma to bring everybody in the State Department together, get their views, and understand how the State Department even though they may object in private to some of these issues, can work together as a State Department to execute the views of the president for the good of the United States of America. And do you think he will specifically be able to get through to Donald Trump and actually affect some of the policies that Trump is considering? And let's be specific about North Korea. Before Donald Trump goes into that room to meet Kim Jong-un, will Mike Pompeo be able to affect the way Donald Trump reacts in that room? Look, Mike Pompeo will have the seat at the table because he sits next to the president every morning as the director of the Central Intelligence Agency and briefs Donald Trump on the intelligence around the world. There is no doubt in my mind that Donald Trump picked him because not only is Mike Pompeo somebody who thinks the same as him, but I think in terms of those private meetings, 
he probably demonstrated to Donald Trump that he could stand up to him, that he wasn't going to just be somebody who was a yes man, but he was going to be somebody that the president knows that probably in private, that Mike Pompeo will disagree and try to influence the president, not only what's good for the office of the presidency, but also for the United States of America. And for the spy agency, for the CIA, Gina Haspel is nominated to take over from Pompeo. Yeah. What do we know about Gina Haspel? An enigma. I mean, there are some public announcements and public uh, testimony talking to her time working for some of the enhanced interrogation programs. That's very controversial, of course. It is yeah. controversial, and it could come back to haunt her in her confirmation hearings up inside the United States Congress. But as you would expect, a 30-year veteran of the clandestine service of the United States, you're not going to know a lot about her. But the fact that she was handpicked not only by Mark Pompeo, but also President Trump, uh, indicates to me that they have full faith and confidence in her abilities. Mark Kimmett, thank you very much for talking to us yeah. on the Newsmakers. Thanks for having me.